Welcome to shop class. Well, hello everybody. I uh, would like to welcome you to shop class. Uh, my name is shop teacher Joe. This is my 19th year teaching high school industrial arts. Uh, Most of what I teach is woodworking, uh, small and repair, and auto shop. I hope to earn your subscription through this video. Left off last week kind of speaking about how I teach in a hybrid model currently. And basically what a hybrid model means is that I see students two days a week. The rest of the week they're doing work from home remote work that complements the courses that they come to me to study. So let's start out by talking about my Woods One class. My Woods One class is currently building a shaker peg shelf. And so this is the project that they're building out of. We build most of our projects out of red oak. All of my students in the class will build the same project. Uh, and we build the same project for usually about three or four years and then we switch projects up. This is a shake a peg shelf. So far they have been working on the top. So let's kind of talk through what they've gotten done so far. So, so far last week, they were able to rough cut their boards to a rough length. Uh, then we were able to get them on the joiner, join a face, join an edge. Then we spent some time going through how to use the thickness planer. And you can see it right over there. And with the thickness planer, it's very simple to operate. However, the toughest part of it is, is measuring the thickness of the board prior to operation and matching it up with that machine. Uh, students have a hard time reading a ruler because they, they haven't. They don't have that experience yet. And so really kind of helping them see uh, how to read it, how to match it on that machine, and then how to operate safely. Uh, so then they planed it to thickness, and then we get on this table saw here. Table saw, spend, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, operation, safe operation, uh, repeatable operation. So we rip it, and then we talk about cross cutting. And we cross cut by using a sliding miter gauge. We trim one edge. I make markings right on the table to help them understand how much they need to trim off to get that 90 degree edge. And then we set up a stop block on the rip fence for repeatability, for safety. Uh, and once they do it a few times, it, it makes a lot of sense to them. Now my Woods 2 class has been working on an end table. So this is the table they've been working on. And this is a little bit of a mock-up of, of what they're going to be working on as far as the base of the table goes. And so you can see four legs, four sides. Being in this hybrid model, I'm not quite certain they'll actually be able to build a drawer. So at this point, they are building identical front and rear and identical sides. Once again, a lot of this is just rinse and repeat, right? So learning uh, rough cut on the miter saw, joint, plane, rip, cross cut. A lot of repeating the same processes. I really try to reinforce the fact that when we have identical pieces, to plan them out so that you are, so that you are planing them at the same time getting the same thickness, that you're ripping them at the same time, getting the same thickness. Chris Salamone said in one of his videos a while back, you know, no tape measure is ever going to be as accurate as an untouched fence. And so I really try to support that uh, as the students operate, identical pieces need to be made at the same time. So let's head into the auto shop. This week in the PowerTech shop, it's been a whirlwind. These students have been having so much fun. Uh, my PowerTech B class, my second group class, have been building their engines. They've been dealing with the frustrations 
of putting connecting rods in backwards around their crankshafts. Uh, they've been getting to uh, install pistons and, and compress piston rings, uh, learning how to use a torque wrench properly, and just doing that engine building thing. Kind of slow, kind of meticulous. We only have about 53 minutes in a class. And so a lot of times, by the time you get everything out, get started, it's almost time to clean up. So it is a little frustrating for them, but they are making progress. Now my Powertech A class, they're taking these engines apart and they're just having fun. Their hands are dirty, they're learning tool names, they're learning righty tighty and lefty loosey. Uh, we've been really just kind of getting to know the engine. I really reinforce the fact that with technology, we need to take pictures of what we're doing. What we're taking apart, leave that crumb trail so that you can put it back together. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've also had the opportunity to work with these students is pulling flywheels. And you can, you can remove a flywheel on a small inch with a pry bar and a hammer, but taking this opportunity to once again teach them about cutting threads, using a tap set, uh, using an actual flywheel puller to pull it out. And I believe that they're learning the correct way to disassemble an engine. You can get the engine apart, but to be able to put it back together without having damaged parts, that, that's valuable. And so Powertech, been a pretty simple week, been a fun week. These hours go by really, really fast. Now, in auto class, last week we were getting the opportunity while they're in the shop to lift the vehicles up using a floor jack, securing those vehicles with a jack stand. And that was a real valuable experience, especially how so many tasks require that. So this week we started out by talking about how to remove a tire using a four-way, using hand tools that a person would have at home. Uh, and then we removed that tire, then we talked about why we would want to rotate tires. Uh, you know, saving money, uh, helping the tire last longer, or even wear, all the possible reasons why we would want to rotate the tire. We went through the process, you know, loosening the lug nuts while the tire's still on the ground lifting the vehicle, securing the vehicle, and then we just do a tire rotation front to back and back to front. Uh, you could do it lots of different ways, but that's the simplest, and I try to keep things simple. If I give them 14 point different ways of doing a job, that's not gonna help them out. If I give them a simple direct way, that sticks. And so we just go front to back, back to front helps the wear later in the week we were able to go backwards a little bit we started talking about how to check tire pressure how to actually use air compressed air to inflate the tires and for most people you think don't you know how to do that no no um, different world now guys so uh, you know it's it's a different world a different population and and that it is what it is and so we just try to teach them all these skills that if they're going to own a small engine or if they're going to own a car someday they have the ability to actually maintain them uh, and that makes it profitable that makes it a worthwhile uh, it makes it worthwhile to own something <laughs> when it works. So uh, I would like to hear some stories from you guys. I really would like to hear the stories of your experiences in the shop class. Now, uh, me being a shop teacher, sometimes I hear stories I don't want to hear. But nonetheless, I still like to hear them. So if you got a story for me, put it in the comments. I would really appreciate that. If you enjoy these videos, 
feel free to subscribe. Uh, feel free to share. Uh, it's just uh, another way in which I'm sharing my life, okay? Some of it's on the farm, some of it's here as a shop teacher. And so I appreciate your time and you sharing it with me. And I, uh, I hope you have a good week. Bye now.